Good afternoon. Welcome to Full Size Ford on this cloudy afternoon. And we're loving it because it's not 100 today. Today we're going to be working on our 1967 Ford Galaxy. Uh, a little trouble getting this one on the trailer when we bought it because the uh, right front wheel is completely locked up. So we are going to try to, uh, to free that up today and get this car to roll. will make it much, much better to get it off the trailer. I mean, that's a, that's a bias ply right there. Look at that baby, she's still got tread on her. All right, so you see yep, that one is locked up solid. Look at that there. Somebody wasn't real well versed in balancing here. Probably could have had a one ounce or ounce and a quarter right there and eliminate having two weights on there. So this car came from uh, Lewiston, Idaho. So a little warmer down there. So we might have some, maybe a black witter, but I don't see one, which is good. See, we got a little, got a little wasp nestage there. Uh, definitely got some uh, another some more wasp. Got a little mud dauber action there, but not too bad for critters. So now work starts on seeing if we can get this thing to free up. What we'll probably have to do is just break the pins on the back and pull the and pull the shoes with it, with all the springs and everything. All right. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna just try a little tap here and see if we can get something to free up, which this is the, I'm gonna try this even though I know that there's no chance that it's gonna work, but you know, you gotta try. something we knocked the dust cap off that one stuck pretty good Nope, she's not moving. All right. So now, what we're gonna do is we'll pull the we'll pull the bearings and see if we just can't pull the whole thing with the shoes and all. Not really the right kind of gloves for this job. I'm trying not to get them too greasy. Yeah. 
close, but a little bit of rust on the bottom of that bearing, but actually she looks pretty good. Let me pack that baby and go. on the race there but see the you can see the drum right there is cracked right here somebody put trying to get this loose already probably there goes a piece of it Got it loose. This be way too big. Pry in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a chisel and I'm gonna knock the back sides of these rivets on these brake nails off. Get some more tools. Okay, so there's that one. Let's cruise it over this way and see if we can do this one. And all I did was pop the back of that nail off right there. Because that's what holds the shoes drum and I've got a feeling that that's what's going on is the drums are rusted to the hub or to the, the shoes are rusted to the drum screwdriver in there, huh? Definitely, there were mud daubers living in there. I can definitely see brake lining. Hear the springs in there?
stuff pretty good. I can, I can see the self-adjuster laying in the bottom of the drum there. Still not tempting it. Maybe spinning. Nope. Okay. So let's turn the wheels and we'll work it a little bit from the other way. Okay. Oh, look, we got him loose from the shoes, Gail. Problem with cars that sit for 30 years with metallic linings. Yeah, the shoes actually coming from the drum, or is it just pulled the pins through the. Oh, I, already, I already chiseled the ends of the pins off. Now the shoes are finally released. There it is. Complete with a mud dauber nest in there and everything. Success, Kale! Alright, so she's off. And you can definitely see where these, uh, where the shoe was just completely rusted to the drum right there. So we're going to just put this back together. We're going to keep all these brake parts separate and all this is going to get replaced anyway. Uh, take a look at the wheel cylinder. If you remember the video we did on the 61 Starliner, how they were just corroded. These ones don't look as bad, but definitely going to have to be replaced. I'm sure those are rusted those pistons are rusted in place so at any rate at least we'll get it back together now and at least it will at least it will roll off the trailer <laughs> all right so we just left the brake parts out of it for right now because we have to get all new stuff anyway but at least we've got the uh, drum spinning bearings are back in so at least we can roll it now and get it off the trailer and uh Go on to the next project with it. All right, so we got that wheel turning, and so now we, it's time to see if the motor will actually turn. Well, this one's going to be very difficult to get a, something on because of this clutch fan. That's in the way. Uh, I don't even know if I can get in there on this one. might be easier to take the fan off actually to be able to get to this one to see if this is going to spin I don't think Let's see if we can just
Yep, let me go get some more tools. I'm gonna take the fan off. Is this motor stuck? Nope, she moved. Might have been a little rust ridge right there, but... But... Oh. Going around 360 degrees right there. So, heck, Kale, she may run. <laughs> All right. So we know that. So we know the motor's not stuck. So I had to get my bike out of the garage to uh, get to my shop vac, and uh, well, it looks like I got a little passenger. Hey there, little buddy. Good. So now that we know this thing isn't frozen, let's take a look at this. You know one thing I noticed about this? Take a look. Definitely got the wrong air cleaner lid. 289. <laughs> this is definitely an FE. Definitely not a small block. breather off we can pull this off and we can take a look at definitely had something living in the motor right there all kinds of stuff in the air cleaner here this was like a regular Taj Mahal so let's look at some clues here see this carburetor one thing we notice right away on the carburetor the tag on it you notice that's you see that right there Is DOTF. That tells us that this carburetor is in early 1970s, first used on 1970 models, and the T in the third designates it as used for trucks. Not that it couldn't have been used on cars, so it's definitely not the original carburetor to this car. But what we want to see now is if this throttle shaft is frozen, and I believe it's going to be frozen. gonna need some work on the carburetor. living in here. So we're getting this thing cleaned off here. Uh, you definitely see some some mouse chewage in the old uh, wiring there. And Kind of got this intake uncovered. Let's say this is a this is a two barrel car. Um, and one thing I noticed on there, it started to, wondering if this is the original engine or not. But I don't know if you would see it on this. Uh, no, but it's a C7TE intake, which would be a uh, 67 for the 67 model year, but would be designed for a truck. Not that they couldn't have used that on a car. 
So I started to think, oh, maybe somebody swapped the motor. Um, but looking at the date code, we have a 7C13 date code on that intake. And the build date on the car is a 24D, which would be a uh, April 24th. So, I mean, the date the date coding is right on this. So this very well could be the original motor. Um, you know, and the very fact that it still has all the air conditioning stuff on it. Sometimes when people swap a motor, if that doesn't work, they may not put it back on or, or whatever. But um, so I'm still optimistic this is the original engine on the car. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got for fluidage. It's not even fully a quart low. It'll smell a little like gasoline. Again, have no idea when's the last time this car was run. But this didn't see any signs of water. Let's take a look at the radiator here. Got a feeling we're not gonna. You know, it's kind of moist right there, but I don't see any water in it. Not up at the top anyway. But there still could be some in. I'm sure if I took a hose off, it would make a mess. It's always the story of my life. So, anyway, all right. So we do have, uh, we really wanted to get this car started to see if we could start it and uh, run it, but that carburetor is not very good. But we do actually have somebody that's coming to look at this car tomorrow that might be interested in purchasing it. So uh, we may not get to do anything more in the future on it, but uh, if we do, you'll see it right here on Full Size Ford. And we'd like to have done a little bit more with this one and played around with it a little more, but I uh, found somebody that was really looking for one of these. Been looking for one for a while, so we had to let her go. But uh, there's always more. So stay tuned to Full Size Ford. Thank you.